Dear Ferraristi, welcome, benvenuti, and thanks for being here with us to share this important moment. In fact, today we are officially unveiling for the first time the new mid-rear engine two-seater Berlinetta. Like any other Ferrari, this is special because of the performance, the design, the style, the technology. But in this case, a specific effort has been put to make it uh, the most fun to drive car in our Prada range. And this is something that will deliver an uncompromising and thrilling pleasure while driving, both on track, but also on normal road. The best way to explain it is to drive it. <laughs> this car is named Ferrari 296 GTB, where the 29 stands for the engine displacement, 2900, and the 6 stands for the V6 engine. This is uh, the first time ever that we are using a V6 engine hybrid on a car, on a road car, carrying the Ferrari badge. The combination of the turbo and hybrid uh, engine will develop 830 horsepower, which makes the most powerful engine in the segment. The combination of uh, the turbo engine is also allowing us to work on the sound, which is further contributing to the fun to drive, and uh, the electric component is uh, allowing us to further reduce almost to zero the turbo leg, which means that there is an immediate response to the throttle. But the engine is not enough. This car is much more compact, especially compared to any other model of the Ferrari Prada range. What we did was uh, to reduce the dimension of the car. The car is much more compact. And most of all, we reduced the distance between the wheel, working on the concept of uh, short wheelbase, which is so common in the Ferrari tradition, that uh, makes the car, together with the engine, and together with the new vehicle dynamic control and the new aerodynamic, a car that reached an incredible peak of fun to drive. To drive has uh, always been 
a key characteristic of uh, any Ferrari model. But uh, in this case, we really push the boundaries to the limit, putting together a new powertrain, new vehicle control, and last but not least, a unique design. This is consistent with uh, different Ferraris for different Ferraristi and different moment which means that we always try to create new model with uh, their own positioning. That's why the 296 GTB is not replacing any other model in our product range, but it's simply creating a completely new segment. It's also going to be the second plug-in hybrid model in our range. But uh, while the SF90 Stradale, which is our range supercar, it is designed for drivers that want to reach the peak of the performance. The new model is designed for drivers that wants to reach the peak of the emotion of driving. And uh, you don't have to be Charles Leclerc or Carlos Sainz to enjoy it. But there is something more to discover. And uh, for the one of you that want to fully exploit the car's dynamic abilities, we have created the new Ferrari 296 GTB Assetto Fiorano. To develop it, uh, we have been working on uh, further reducing the weight through an extensive use of carbon fiber components. A new, more extreme handling, thanks to the racing-derived uh, suspension, and uh, last but not least, uh, a new dedicated livery. Ferrari and the concept of uh, fun to drive are an inseparable combination, and the new formula adopted for the 296 GTB strengthened that bond still further. The epitome of sportiness, performance, and driving thrills at their best. Lighten, sharpen, intensify. It's a formula McLaren has got down pat now. There have been two LT models before, the 675 LT in 2015 and the 600 LT in 2018, and both were utterly tremendous, not only great on track, but arguably just as rewarding on the road. There's little variation from the basic template this time round. The 765 LT has another 45 brake horsepower over the 720S it's based on and is 80 kilograms lighter. According to most measures, the carbon-tubbed 1,419 kilograms 720S is already the lightest car in its class. Taking 80 kilograms out of it is not the work of a moment. Rather than bore you with every weight loss detail, here are a couple of highlights. The 720S has stowage compartments in the upward opening doors. Replacing those would save weight, but it took a few goes to get right so your phone wouldn't fall out when the doors were raised. End result, elasticated nets that save 800g. 1% of the total. Thinner glass for the windscreen accounts for 1.7kg, polycarbonate glass round the back a further 4.3kg. The big ticket items are the seats, wheels, open aluminium mesh on the back deck and titanium exhaust. You can go lower than 1,339 kilograms by visiting MSO, McLaren Special Operations, who, for 30,000 pound will replace the standard outer door skin and rear bumper with carbon panels, saving 7 kilograms. Only you will know because the panels are painted. Maybe do that to offset specking the no-cost air con. Downforce is increased by 25% over the 720S, although McLaren won't talk actual numbers because this, unlike the Senna, is not a downforce car. Still, the rear wing now has 50% more surface area and sits 60mm high on the back deck. 
Up front the ride height has been dropped 5 mm, the track width increased 6 mm and all sorts of suspension fiddling and fettling has occurred. There's now a helper spring in addition to the main spring, a stiffer torsion bar, a quicker steering rack and new suspension algorithms. The brake calipers are from the Senna, and if you spend an extra £15,000 you can have its big brother's discs as well. Those, 60% stronger than conventional carbon ceramics and with four times the thermal conductivity, take seven months to create, including three months baking in an oven at over 1000 centigrade. The engine is probably the least remarkable thing about the 765LT. The piston and gasket design has been changed and the fuel and oil systems operated to help deliver a total of 755 brake horsepower, 765 PS. The torque peak of 590 pounds-feet at 5, 500 rpm is only up 22 pounds-foot more importantly McLaren claims to have improved the torque response, vital given Ferrari's ability in that area. With a power-to-weight ratio of 564 brake horsepower per ton, plus a shorter final drive ratio to stack the gears more closely, the 765 LT is a hell of a sprinter. On the standard Trofeo R tires it'll hit 62 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, 124 miles per hour in 7.0 seconds and do the standing quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds. To 186 miles per hour, its time of 18.0 seconds puts it 3.4 seconds ahead of the 720S. Maximum speed is 205 miles per hour. Overall it's 57 mm longer than the 720S, the lion's share, 48 mm, of that at the back. But that's mainly a symbolic nod. The letters, not the length, tell the story here. One of attention to detail and claims of maximum driver engagement. In the flesh it's a stunning looking thing, low, aggressive and angry, and at £280,000 its £70,000 markup over the 720 looks reasonable value compared to the £335,000 Merc is charging for the forthcoming GTR Black Series, double a standard GTR 765 are being built between now and early next year, and all of this year's allocation are already spoken for. No matter how good it is, the 765 LT will not, cannot, have the impact of the original 675 LT. At the time that was the step change for McLaren, the car, over and above the P1, that really put it on the map for driver enjoyment. If the 765 can live up to that, it'll have done its job. That the 765 LT is hugely, shockingly fast and involving will come as no surprise. What might come as more of a surprise is that it mistakes aggression for driver engagement. This is obviously a fine line to tread, but it's a line the 675 LT, and to a lesser extent the 600 LT, trod confidently. Our suspicion is that the 765 LT will prove mighty on a fast, open circuit but that's kind of by the by, because the magical thing about the 675 LT is that it was awesome to drive everywhere. As yet, we haven't driven the 765 LT on road, but on track it didn't flow as well as we hoped. It's terrifically fast, looks fantastic, its focus on lightweighting is peerless, it felt connected and fed back information very successfully, but was slightly jagged in its manners, occasionally seemed to be fighting against its driver rather than flattering them. It's a harder charger than anything else in its segment, and some may like that, enjoy the challenge of keeping up with it, managing the occasional snatch and grab. It has to be said that expectations were dizzyingly high for the 765 LT, and by most measures it doesn't fall far short of the standards set not only by previous LTs, but also the fabulous 720S itself. But for us an LT is more than just a track weapon, it needs to have a sense of flow as well as precision. It is fearsomely, intimidatingly fast.
Everything's so different now Sitting by the fire as you'd watch the flames burn out I miss the days I wasn't afraid Now I always have my guard up Hands on my face, I learned to cope with the pain I know that people think I'm trying to get attention But in reality I'm trying to send a message I know there's kids out there that are going through the same thing And if you're one of them I hope to help you suffering Just know it will get better and these feelings do not stay the same, no they don't stay the same I don't wanna make you feel bad But you kinda ruin my life You hurt me and ruin my life And I don't wanna make you feel bad But you kinda ruin my life You hurt me and ruin my life <laughs> a couple friends on my way up i took a couple l's but that's just normal talk i popped a couple pills but they don't do much and now i take prozac in the morning with some other stuff but why did i get into this i feel like this is all a dream but when i wake up look around this is an even make believe so i sit in the corner thinking back to all the memories i grew up with these fake beliefs by the time i find a remedy i don't wanna make you feel bad
год. Поехали! Хеннесси Веном F5. Стоимость 1,2 миллиона долларов. Этот автомобиль оснащен мощным двигателем на 7 литров. Скорость 100 км в час он развивает за 2,5 секунды. При максимальном значении 464 км в час. Хеннесси Веном выпущен всего лишь в 30 экземплярах. Zenvo ST1. Стоимость 1,225 миллионов долларов. Компания из Дании разработала этот суперкар с двигателем мощностью 1104 лошадиных силы и объемом 6,8 литров. За 3 секунды он разгоняется до 100 км. Максимальная отметка на ограничителе 375 км в час. Пагани Хуара. Стоимость 1,3 миллионов долларов. Не зря название спортивного монстра в переводе с языка инков обозначает «бог ветров». Шестилитровый двигатель имеет мощность 720 лошадиных сил. Лишь за 3 секунды одна из самых дорогих машин в мире 2016 года разгоняется до 100 км в час. McLaren P1. Стоимость 1,35 миллионов долларов. Данный гиперкар имеет гибридный двигатель на 3,8 литров с мощностью 903 лошадиных силы. Целых 10 километров может преодолеть McLaren P1, используя свои батареи. Чтобы полностью зарядить их, потребуется 2 часа свободного времени и обыкновенная розетка. Специальные подстанции могут обеспечить необходимый заряд всего за 10 минут. Этот автомобиль разгоняется до 100 км за 2,7 секунды при максимальной скорости 350 км в час. На этой скорости установлен ограничитель. Майбах Ландалет. Стоимость 1,38 миллионов долларов. 612 лошадиных сил под капотом такого немецкого автомобиля дают возможность достигать 100 км за 5,2 секунды. Коэниксек Агера. Не знаю, как правильно произносится название этого автокара, но думаю, что сказал правильно. Стоимость этого автомобиля 1,6 миллионов долларов. Самая дорогая машина в мире 2016 года, которая расположилась на шестом месте сегодняшнего рейтинга шведского происхождения. Двигатель с 1140 лошадиными силами может работать на биотопливе. Всего 2,8 секунды требуется этому автомобилю, чтобы разогнаться до 100 км в час. На Коэниксек Агера стоит ограничитель скорости с максимальным значением 375 км в час. Aston Martin 177. Стоимость 1,85 миллионов долларов. Элитный английский автомобиль разгоняется за 3,7 секунды до скорости 100 км в час. Объем двигателя 7,3 литров и 760 лошадиных сил. Существует только 77 моделей Aston Martin 177 во всем мире. Bugatti Veyron Supersport. Стоимость этого автомобиля 2,4 миллионов долларов. Это не только один из самых дорогих автомобилей нашего времени, но и самый быстрый серийный авто. Максимальная скорость 431 км в час, 2,5 секунды для разгонов 100 км в час, 1200 лошадиных сил и 8-литровый двигатель. Вот характеристики Bugatti Veyron Supersports. Lucan Hypersport. Стоимость 3,4 миллиона долларов. Ливанский спорткар оснащен двигателем мощностью 750 лошадиных сил, что позволяет ему разгоняться до 100 км в час за 2,8 секунды, а до 200 за 9,4. Максимальное значение скорости 390 км в час. Только 7 моделей этого автомобиля выпускаются за год. Ламборджини Венена. Стоимость 4,5 миллионов долларов. Итальянский суперкар, который занимает первое место сегодняшнего рейтинга, имеет сравнительно небольшую мощность – 750 лошадиных сил и объем двигателя 6,5 литров. Почти за 3 секунды он развивает скорость 100 км в час. Но высокая стоимость Lamborghini Venena не в технических характеристиках. Лишь три эксклюзивных Lamborghini Venena выпускаются в год. На этом все. Напишите в комментариях, какой из автомобилей вам нравится больше всего. Ну и не забывайте поставить лайк, поделиться видео с друзьями и подписаться на новые интересные видео. Пока!